we we got to pleasant we actually got it unlooted and we decided that hey if we don't get kills here we are not going to qualify because we knew we were aiming for 90 points and we got just 89 but we had those four wins so i was like in those end games we were on high ground and we we're like hey man we gotta slay out like we have to like it's now or never and then i don't know i was just <laughs> i wasn't really nervous but i mean I it was kind of going through my head <laughs> I was nervous at the beginning, but then as we kept going through, I stopped getting less and less nervous. Now, Calc, you've had like not a rocky relationship, but you've had a very unique relationship with that Fortnite community. Do you think that there's a new level of respect for that young Calc, you know, word out there on the streets? Like, how do you feel right now? Like, how ecstatic do you feel in terms of recognition? I am so <laughs> excited. I am so happy. We don't need to boost his ego anymore. Well, gentlemen, I think it is deserved slightly a little bit of boost of that ego because you are going to New York, so we're going to see you there. But I do want to give you guys one more chance to, you know, shout anything out you want and also your socials. Make sure you get those plugs in their calculator. We'll start with you. Follow young underscore calc on Twitter. That's it. Young underscore my calc on Twitter. Macwood, what's up? My my Twitch is uh, C-O-L Macwood, and then my Twitter is at C-O-L underscore Macwood. Well, there you have it, guys. We will see you in New York, and as we always say, we'll have to grab a slice. But thank you so much, and congratulations. We'll see you there. We have N.A. West up on deck, guys. Thank you so much for that interview. But this is going to be the last spot up for Grabshire. We're going to go ahead and take a sneak peek at the standings that are currently unfolding because the action is underway. So here it is, and again, I mean... Time and time again, it's always Arkham and Falconer on top, but then the rest of these guys are all fighting because Arkham and Falconer have already qualified. And the rest of these guys as well, Landrock and Punisher, all of a sudden they're on West, but again, they've already qualified too. So the rest of these guys playing for that one spot. What I find really interesting is Epic Will is actually doing with 40 yard Storm, huh. usually it's him and Seal Matt, right? All, all there side by side. So everyone's switching up for week 10. It's gonna be very, very interesting to see how things get down, break down, um, and I'm excited. Yeah, going, I yeah. mean, that's the kind of staple duos of NA West right now are, are well, splitting up at the same time. Epic Whale normally playing with Seal Matt here at 40R Storm. They both actually qualified in solos, so this switch could be an opportunity to triple qualify. I mean, in week eight, they have been playing out of their mind. It's crazy. We saw Aiden and Sean qualify, but the rest of these guys as well, Kayun and Takata had such an amazing run throughout the rest of the weeks. But I mean, I think we want to get in the action because we just kicked up the dust. I want to see who's standing when it all is said and done, when that dust is settled. So we are going to have Shio joining the cast and, of course, Pookie on the other side. Guys, the stakes are set and the floor is yours. Awesome. Stakes are set. Bala, we are about to hop in to our first set of NA West games. Shy, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling uh, feeling pretty good, feeling yeah. pretty hyped. It's been a, a fun time. I'm excited to see how the West Brawl goes down. I'm um, excited to cast with you as well. So we can get right to it. Games are ready. I'm excited to hop in. Let's uh, jump on that battle bus. Let's go. Awesome. Now, hilariously enough, Shy and I were talking a little bit earlier in our little caster room that, you know, Zeke likes to just, you know, hog for himself, take up all the space on the couch. Uh, but we were talking, and we realized that we actually live within 10 minutes of each other. Yeah, it's pretty wild. It's a <laughs> small world and uh, a fun world as well. So, you know, so, content yeah. coming out. On the content <laughs> is going to be created. We can tell you that much. But here we are taking a look at some content. Here coming out of Jacob and his partner, Dizzle. They are on the edge of Shifty Shafts here holding very very good high ground using that advantage to rain down shots on their opponents. Absolutely, look at their classic loadout as well. Looks like it's a nice heavy sniper scar combat in there. Not many new items up in the mix. We've got the classic minis. It looks like they might have not found any chuck splashes for them as I think that's really strong. One thing to point out as well is six elims on Dizzle and then four on Jacob. That's 10 total at the moment and we're just getting in to that fifth zone closing. About two hours left on NA West. So it's gonna be very exciting to see who qualifies with that one spot for this region. Yeah, and there we see Jacob taking a perfect oh shot with my. a heavy sniper there, taking out Sinnoh like it's nobody's, nobody's business. business now. now. He 
He is going to have to be careful here. He is taking a little bit of time to peek, but it doesn't matter. He did pick up that elimination there. That's an international snipe as Sinnoh's usually playing on those Asian servers, switching over to West just to get a better chance of popping off as the region is a lot more aggressive and consistent at most times. Aim backup goes down. Could not find that hard drive to pick up the aim or game sense in that situation. A big bop coming in. Dizzle catching his builds open, going for that finish. Smart plays as possible. White health getting hit on the storm line backup. Finally goes down, Dizzle picks up that elimination. And nobody punishing these guys right now, Shy. They're on ultimate high ground, just standing out in the open, just exposing themselves, raining down shots, and nobody is wanting to really punish them for these actions right now. You can see Dizzle taking a ton of time to peek. It is kind of a rough angle, but there are so many players across the river over there that would have the freest of shots on them right now, but it doesn't matter. Dizzle comes out with another heavy snap. Dizzle and Jacob just going to town with these heavy snipe shots. Absolute marksman here. He hasn't actually missed, I don't think, the last three shots all intended to go exactly on target. That elimination getting picked up. He's not going to be in the air. 13 total elims for these guys across the board. And they find high ground to connect to as well, giving them the next best position for the next zone moving in. The stick zone being one of those zones where if you have control and you retain control with a little bit of space, you can just run away with the whole game. And Dizzle recognizing that and playing that perfectly, trading just 10 health and utilizing his builds to reinforce the high ground there. Does get dropped down a little, but is going to still be an ultimate high ground. Jacob, his partner, is just below him, a few tiles down, but is using the Shadow Bomb to make sure he gets up beside Dizzle, make sure they are together. They do still have that Rift to go, so staying together right now is key. Just like that, using the Rift to go to get out of a sticky situation, you love to see it. Absolutely. One thing we do notice about West, which is kind of different from East, EU, OCE, and BR even, is that this current moment is a lot of people will stick to the storm and actually take damage to push, push, push for that elimination. As we all know, it's one spot. You can play your best, but sometimes you have to play above your best potential as well, which is what Dizzle's trying to do, hovering out, seeing if he can kind of expose any possible angles near the backside of the storm, getting into someone's box. Dizzle really low, finally going down taking out one of the meta boys. He's gonna see if his duel can clutch it out now. Jacob, where are you at? Yeah, Jacob is absolutely on the other side right now. I don't even think he's gonna have the opportunity to get Dizzle up. He does make his way over to him, but it is unfortunately gonna to be too late. Jacob is going to have to say, Dizzle, you're going to get left out in the storm, literally. Here we have Rizzo here, and Brogster just taking out Bluey with, with the combat shock. And we see this time and time again. These guns are so strong. The way that they are utilized by these players in both close combat as well as range when they are picking out kills from the sky. We have Brockster here looking for more targets, using the edits, staying close to his partner, who's also raining down shots. Shy, there's so much going on, the chaos. <laughs> it's insane. Brockster has that classic loadout as well, a gray AR and a combat with shields. Pookie, what do you think the type of pressure these guys feel when this is all they have? No backup, no rifts. It's so difficult, you know, you have to be very aware of your surroundings. You need to know where every player around you is because like we just see right here, if you have to waterfall down and get out, you need to know that there's nobody below you that's going to try and shoot you out or, or you know, possibly inflict any amounts of damage on you. But Fisco up at the top here, backup, his partner has actually been eliminated. So it is up to him. They have three eliminations, 20 points between the two of them. Fisco looking to make a couple of plays here and he does Ooh. on Ricori. Ricori goes down, is going to get taken out by the storm. Unfortunately, gets eliminated there. Fisco saying, you know what? I'm gonna net myself one more, Pookie. You don't know what you're talking about. I have two and I have three, huh? <laughs> one big thing about this game too is back was actually Fisco's duo who got heavy sniped by Jacob and his partner and now the roles are reversed now they have high ground Pookie which is insane you can see the patience coming through the use of mobility at the right times Jacob nowhere to be seen anymore as Fisco runs away with the game we now have a big action moment happening Junkman Cutie gets Alec down he gets cleaned up Claps is coming up he's still alive actually finishes off on Alec Claps gets bopped down by Boop big Boop's coming out Fisco still on high ground it's a 1v1 now Boop 8D versus Fisco. Fisco with the health advantage. Boop gonna be looking to tarp low ground and protect himself as much as possible. Fisco does have that med kit as well to use. He does have advantage in the start. Popping it now to stay a little bit stealthy in zone. Boop now moving up, seeing if he can capitalize or kind of get over that. Fisco set him up. It was a setup the whole time. He baited him 
out. Wanted him to come out and see what's up. The Aldez follows up as well. Really nice last second judgment call from Fisco there. He could have got that met kit off, but decided to just straight up jump out, go for that shot. That was sick. Boop got booped. Boop got booped. Absolutely. He did. <laughs> but look at these builds. Absolutely wild. Whenever you see different points of elevation there on the map, you know these players are all going to be utilizing their materials to their fullest to make sure their rotations are strong. But here we are in the next match with Nolan here. We have vibes on 60 hertz. Somebody get this man a 144 <laughs> monitor. Come on. Hey, sometimes these guys could be fronting. You know, you see that name in the feed. You might get a little bit of confidence. You might overpeak, and then they come straight out with their actual hertz and bop you up. Oh, I like it. <laughs> pun. Is that a Canadian thing? Are puns <laughs> a Canadian thing? Do you love puns too? I love puns too. You know, I'm infamous. Hey, my really? Okay. Puns, right? puns. You know that? Let's see if we can make I some. feel like we need to we need to try really hard right now. I love. Oh, I no. know production loves. <laughs> I love the puns. I love the puns. But these guys also <laughs> love results. Still one spot left for all of them. Spraying on metal might not be too effective. He does have the stinks here. Pookie, how would you think um, Vibes should use these stinks going forward into this game? What's the drawbacks of using them before and then after, later and earlier? I mean, he knows that he has the, the down over there, but it doesn't matter. He ended up taking out Bucky anyway. The thing with stinks is you need to really be sure of when you're using them. You know, mm -hmm. I know we've talked a little bit about this in the past, but the smaller the zone gets, the more effective they essentially become and the more damage they can afflict inflict sorry on on certain on, on your opponents depending on where they are on the map so if you're able to hold on to them and get eliminations in other ways look at look at this going into this next zone we have 39 players remaining that's a lot of damage you can inflict Absolutely. with those stink bombs so if you're able to really just utilize them closer to like the seventh eighth even ninth zone uh, you know they're just gonna be more and more powerful exactly you talk about other ways as well while Johnny making sure that he has his own box and lair set up and then him and his duo kind of unorthodox I haven't really seen it too too much before fire two layers up and pick up both parts of the duo that they ended up eliminating a lot of stuff available for them as well to switch over to combat upgrades drum guns for the end of the game because as you said the zone closes up these close range guns that's what pops off over and over again they have the option of smokes as well there's a rift being able to be taken by Johnny as well we'll see if he can capitalize on that in this box or just making sure everything is taken up everything's being tallied turrets being dropped and traded there is a rift going on now as the zone just starts moving there are 22 duels at the life so placement is not up yet you know west is still pretty fat stacked we'll see what these guys can get up to as the rift pops up yeah and you can see what he did there he actually popped the rift and then picked up the shadow bombs there so making sure that he isn't leaving a spot open in his inventory fu fully utilizing all of the all of the mobility he has <laughs> but look at all of these players here up in the sky i think i count over 10 of them are up there just you know soaring through the sunset yeah another rift pops as well really good view on the sunset some people more sunnier than others we'll see if they don't get <laughs> lost in those clouds as there are so many people landing this is where if you're in the middle of the pack it's very very hard to get your own definitive layers so that's what everyone's going to be trying to do these rings might also get in the way these slipstream rings that are kind of disabled at the moment because you know a little bit of randomness happens here and there it gets a little bit jumbled up but now johnny taking control of that high ground pressuring an individual end zone legend now gets knocked down his ranking going all the way down to novice or rookie no more <laughs> legend status for you there my friend johnny now moving out three elims Dade is still alive as well they have this insurance with the smoke so they can wait all the way up on height be very very generous with how much time they spend here and then um, pop off when the moment seems just right yeah, and there's still 29 players alive so this is probably one of the most populated lobbies we've seen all day Johnny utilizing his traps placing them down there saying you know what this is my high ground you are not going to take it because if you do you're going to get my high ground, but you're also going to have 150 damage inflicted. Yeah, exactly. 17 duels now left alive as the 16 are now left. One of them goes down. This next elimination batch of Elims coming out is going to make it so that the 15 points of placement goes across the rest of the lobby as well. Still a lot of insurance available. They have a launch pad as well to use as they start cleaning up the server, going up all the way to eight Elims. 13 duels left alive now. Outer gets outed. He's gone. No more indoor soccer for you, my friend. You just got kicked out of the lobby. 
I think I met my match for a pun <laughs> quite honestly. I'm quite enjoying this. Whoever put us together on the cast, kudos to you guys. This, this is great. Here we have Johnny again just utilizing uh, his, his assault rifle there to just try and put as much pressure. He has the ammo for it, so why not? Why not try to get knocked just like that? Takes out Bot Turt. He goes down completely. We see him not being able to make it out of the zone, unfortunately. We have Typical Gamer on mid-ground. Look at these bolt boys. They're still up top, just raining shots down. Down, Shy. Yeah, we talk about knowing when to give up height, Pookie. These guys do not care at the moment. They have the advantage. They have the tools just in case it gets knocked down. It does not matter to them. They're going to try to exploit as much as they can, see if they can get any more angles on elimination. When do you think is the proper time to drop down from height, Pookie? I mean, it really depends. If you know where people are on the map, if you know how many people are on low ground, how many are mid, and if you have anybody, anybody above you, just recognizing, you know, if there's other players that are fighting it out, you know, just utilizing that split second. It's really a split second decision, so it's hard to say you know when the right time is but I would say a knowing where everybody is on the map and B recognizing if there are people in fights and here we see Zen just get taken out by typical gamer not playing very typical to me at all <laughs> showing us that you know what he belongs here he belongs in these qualifiers we have Johnny and Dade up top still just taking out syllable he falls down vibes goes down in mid ground and it looks to be now a 2v1v1 shy Absolutely. If we look at these guys finally getting to drop down near the end of the ninth circle, Johnny looking for any shots while Dade plays up for insurance. Typical gamer in a very sandwichy spot, but there is no yummy, scrumptious, delicious dessert for him today as he gets knocked. Sides are also going down at the very end. Johnny dropping down, doing all the work while his duo Dade gets up there and gives him the info to play it out. I love that. I love when you see duos split like that. They recognized that it was going to be a 2v1. So what they did was, like you said, drop down. One plays a close quarter combat, applies pressure that way. The other one stays up top, raining down shots from above. You have two angles of pressure. And being that solo player, you know, your chances are not high that you're getting out of that alive. Not at all. It's always a rough spot. We're speaking about rough spots. I'm looking at them. FaZe Jarvis here, who is at the moment no shields, less HP. Um, than 100, anything can kind of take him out, just a head dink by an AK or anything that kind of touches him or breezes him is going to put him in a very more shambles position. Although, you know, when you're in these positions, your back's against the wall, that's where you start making these big desperate plays that players don't expect. A lot of loot available for them now. Tilt getting back up his shields all the way up to 24. He has a little bit of leeway now as well to play in with the zone. They have minis as well that Tilt takes. Jarvis kind of being left there stranded, but, you know, he's a good player. I know he can get it out. He, he can easily go out there, get some more elims, get his health topped off as well. Yeah, it looks like Jarvis said, you know what, you take the minis. I'm just going to take this, this big shield here. Jarvis did pick up the RPG, but put it back down. So it's going to be interesting to see if they choose to pick that up. They may not have the ammunition for it, but in that position, Shy, do you pick up the RPG and just have it in your inventory, say over, for example, two bandages, or do you just leave it and say, you know what, we're not going to see if we can pick up any more ammo. It's going to be a wasted slot. What do you do? I mean, if you want to have a guarantee, if you want to just stick to your game plan and not get distracted, you know, tunnel visioning is a big thing that duos start to get into. Some people might play too much around the RPG. That's where practice comes in, right? Maybe these guys saw, and here we go, actually. This is another strat I was about to bring up. Sometimes you can carry the RPG, use all the rockets, and then take your bandages and be on with your day. But for the moment, it looks like they did find a few more rockets are going to play off that RPG, giving away the bandages, making this their prime focus of utility. It's a very smart decision when, a decision when players decide to keep one source of big bang momentum utility and then play around that, make that their win condition. And that's what Jarvis and Tilt are gonna do, who are actually now looking a lot healthier in metal instead of brick now, in a very good spot to move out in the zone. They're in an excellent position right now, but we, I really just have to point out here, we have 43 players alive, so the effectiveness of that RPG is going to be absolutely huge. When you have this many players in this small of a zone, it is chaotic, it is loud, shots are raining from everywhere. So utilizing this RPG and maybe, like you said, just drop Dropping it later for other things might not be too bad of an idea when there are this many players vying for real estate on this map right now. Yeah, they don't call it the Wild Wild West for no reason, as a lot of people are going to be switching layers. A big flick coming up wow. from Jarvis. Holy moly, as he gets a nice head dink off, he gets Pepe off on rotation as well right before the launch pad. Him and Jarvis now going to be moving up 
tilt. We'll see if he can pick up anything. Both players putting in the same amount of work as they find their own layer to pop off on. Yeah, and you can see their tilt actually utilizing the slipstream as cover. Did you see he was yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. floating down beside it because he recognized that there were players in front of him, and you can do that. They will block shots. It's a form of natural cover, so very, very high IQ play coming out of phase tilt. I wouldn't expect anything less. <laughs> exactly. It's all about being dynamic, seeing that one-second decision, and taking less than a second to confirm that decision. It, it saves you match, saves you health, saves you a lot of things. Now you can utilize that position, that advantage on HP, just as Tilt's doing here. Some shots coming in, but that reload, unfortunately, being something that stops him from the eliminations. Their top is going to get dropped down as they drop down as well. Tilt, Jarvis getting stuck in his own pyramid. Shadow Bomb's coming out. Luckily, someone did edit a door as they both jump out, hopefully sticking together. One of the big things duos have is getting lost on these rotation solo items where there's one person in the ball, one person in the shadow. But by, by, by week 10, this is where people are kind of used to everything. They've practiced with it a lot, and they just pop off. Tilt now looking for any angles with that heavy sniper to follow up with. Not sure where Jarvis is for the moment. 26 duels left alive as we get, or 26 players left alive, excuse me, as we get towards the placement points. Dard getting picked up from the backside of the zone. Telt's going to be moving through, taking a bit of zone damage off of that as well. Will it be worth it? He's going to lose a lot of shield too, blocking someone off. Jarvis very low, gets eliminated. 15 duels now left alive, so Tilt did pick up those placement points along with a few Elam points as Rex gets picked up as well and it's coming down not his floor though on the edge of storm destroyer carnage on the backside of zone as he destroys his opposition Bumboy going down towards stinks destroyer actually almost makes it out but falls to the storm Landon and cortex on height now crayon going to be moving around a lot of different layers available but it's actually kind of unique, Pookie. The height is not too high at the moment. What does that kind of spell for the rest of the game for those mid and low ground tarps? I mean, it's it's much easier for them to know and recognize who is on high ground at that point. Um, but they have to be very careful because it does not take much for Cortex or Landon to just make the play and make the decision to drop down. We talked about this a little bit earlier on. You know, these players on NA West, they are vying for one spot. So you're going to see these plays just like this where Cortex makes that split decision to just take out the box that player does fall down that was flair he is out of this game we have a few people still in mid ground but we have landon down at the bottom with aldem aldem is by himself he is by himself lucas got taken out earlier so synergy aldem just by himself here it is going to be a 2v1 shy we've seen it so many times before call this one <laughs> cortex and landon on the top side of this storm it is the ninth circle so it will be closing out in about 50 seconds here can alden pull this together he does have the mats but can the mats survive the spray landon now going for a few angles but alden sensing that drops down another layer this is his last layer though dodging that combat shotgun shot landon taking a little bit of zone damage and receiving some damage from Aldem in return as well. Cortex now has to be the brains of this group as he has the most shield. Will he drop down first? Will Landon play insurance? No, they're going to send Landon down. Nope, they're going down together actually, playing off of edits. Aldem finally taking 50 shots to his shields. His shields drop down. The 2v1 just perfectly played there. Did lose a little bit of HP on the initial push, but at the end of the day, these guys clean it up. Very nice janitorial services, and they get through with that game. Very dope. Very well played by those two. We've seen it time and time again. You know, I love duos just because they're so dynamic, but every time we see the 2v1, my heart just sinks. I feel <laughs> for that solo player. I've been in that position so many times myself. Your heart is pounding. The blood is pumping, but no time for that. We are taking a look at Ghost Aiden and Ghost Sean Aiden participating uh, in the Pro-Am this past weekend. I had the opportunity to talk with him and you know, just a great guy all around. I love to see him in these qualifiers doing well and he is going to actually be pushing forward and pressuring this box here. There are two players inside of it. He makes the edit, he gets the shot off of Refined. Refined goes down and Ghost Aiden coming in with the cleanup there and says, you know what? Where's your partner? Exactly. I'm look yes. for him. Aiden smells blood right now, and he gets Espaz. Espaz is gone. Aiden making quick work of the edits, just the flicks, 
absolutely incredible player, deserves everything. Aiden, I love you. <laughs> absolutely. <the> He's using <laughs> this cool trick that you can, I think, only do on controller for the moment. So one advantage to them where they can actually shoot and wall replace at the same time because their button functionality is a little bit different from uh, the PC players. So him using that twice to actually take the advantage of those opponent's walls, you know, ping might be a factor, might not be, but very, very smart knowledge there, knowing when to use those tricks, when they can be a bit too overbearing. He cleans it up, though, very, very nicely. Gets some easy shots as Arkham now is going to be, he's going to be up top in the leaderboards, actually, with Falconer as well. We'll see, we'll see if they can pop off at this moment. 42 points for them. They have the Chuck Splash, six minis, two Shadow Bombs as well. So they're sitting very, very nice on rotational items, but Arkham is rocking that tack shotgun, obviously not a combat, might hurt him on those long range engagements when he needs to follow up if he can't use his heavy AR. We'll see what these guys can do on this low ground. Yeah, and we've seen a lot of players opting for the combat shotgun over the tactical shotgun, just because, like you said, for range it is a little bit better, but slight falling to Arkham there, just a few quick shots uh, with his heavy AR, just taking him out there completely. Falconer kind of just hanging out back. I think he knows that Prequel is there. He understood that 100%, getting the edit out, and Plart, Prequel's partner, is staying back there as well. So let's see if Falconer and Arkham go for the engagement here. They've already got a little bit of damage inflicted on them but it looks as though they are opting at this point to maybe just disengage for now absolutely they're also really really good on mats on this low ground tarp as well so they could tunnel in if they wanted to they do have rotation as well Aiden and Sean are going to be controlling that mid to high ground section Sean now busting out 30 HP taken from Storm will it be worth it will his position rule at the end of the day we'll see him trying to fight for height pyramids up going to stick with the mid ground there a person in his box as Sean goes down to Valafen Valafen going to be finishing up that elimination Aiden now looking out going to be playing this game solo as you said it's so hard but they've done work in the lobby already Pookie eight eliminations available or taken from them from the server Punisher also in this game as well so a lot of high ranked on the leaderboards individuals we'll see how it all pans out Aiden now on his last smoke on the sixth storm now he's gonna have to use his brains his understanding of when to pressure his knowledge on how people are rotating on the map right now looking for a horizontal peak a lot of shield damage coming out no defense from prequel he goes down Aiden picking up the duo port and prequel both falling to his tommy gun spray his patented tommy gun spray as well he's gonna see if he can get one more peek out no now on rotation pressure versus positioning here is the question of the game that trap blocking a sight line as well as that metal goes straight to opaque from see-through landjock punisher actually going down from that duo landjock taking a bunch of storm damage but phases up one tier of tarp he's gonna be easily surviving this moment but will he be able to live a little bit bit longer with that less of HP. Yeah, and it looks like Aiden is going to take this moment to maybe just try and get a big shield off. He isn't going to be able to. The storm is right at his back. He did take 10 damage there, so he's going to be very careful. He needs to get a siphon here. He needs to get some kind of knock, and he does. He gets it on Smooth Shy. Smooth falls down. Aiden breaks out of the box with 75 HP. He is rushing forward. He has the mats. He can keep doing this. He needs to keep going. He needs to try and get himself healed up, and this is exactly the play that I wanted to see coming out of Aiden right now. Using the campfire to get that a little bit more effective health. He wasn't unfortunately able to get any shields off. He is going to have really have to try and get some time to get those three big shields, or two rather, uh, added to his name if he wants any shot at lasting in this game right now. Absolutely. Shields are a big privilege in these end game circles. Health is what most people love to have. We'll see if he can get those big shields off playing with a classic loadout as Falconer misses a quick snipe but catches himself with that redeploy. He also has a heavy sniper available, which is not reloaded at the moment but doesn't need to be as the combat is the main player of his loadout at the moment. Another redeploy catch coming in, going to make him a very, very sneaky and infamous coming in from the backside of the zone. Finally catches up to Arkham. Going to be looking for shots. Again, they own all the walls. The walls see and hear everything these duels are doing, and they're calling back saying, give me Elims. It's my turn now. It's Boom. It's my, <laughs> my turn for Elims. Falconer there using his shields to get himself healed up. We see Aiden, unfortunately, Unfortunately, going down his reign in this game is over. We have a cow at the very top ultimate high ground and we, here we have Arkham and Falconer down ultimate low ground utilizing their builds to try and get those edits out. 
recognizing where there's opponent right on the other side of that wall they're gonna make the edit they do they make the edit this is why it's so powerful to build out like that when you're on ultimate low ground you need to be tarping like that because you have all the control shy I believe Epic Will was also fourth, and he goes down when we last checked up on the leaderboards. Unfortunately, Falconer and Arkham, though, are both going to be alive in this endgame as it is, and it looks like a 1v1v2 at the moment. LV going up. Arkham Falconer gonna re retain that high ground. We'll see if they can close this game out. Falconer dropping down as Arkham stays up top. LV in a box, but gets bopped as he falls all the way down. Doesn't look like he had any mats left for that one, or maybe he fell down to the pressure. Very, very clean win from Falconer there. Very, very clean indeed. Falconer and Arkham pulling out 11 eliminations, securing themselves that victory royale. Congratulations to those two. We are just getting started with these NA West games. They are on fire in this region right now. Bala, have you been watching? I have. We're about halfway through NA West, and that is just a presentation of why Falconer and Arkham are at the top of the leaderboards and why they've already qualified Zeke. We've got some stuff to look at, some highlights, some breakdowns from those last four games. For sure, my man. We, let's take a look at Bolt, Johnny, and Dottie. They, this dynamic duo, I mean, they just represent what you should be doing here, right? Like, this is going to be the skill gap you're looking to achieve all the, of the time. You know, we've, we've heard from several players as far as like 12 hour days of nothing but Fortnite. And this is what this translates to, right? Bolt, uh, Johnny, and Dottie together, they're just maintaining high ground, tearing through players in these late game circles. Now we're gonna be watching them through until a victory royale here. And just watch, you know, you can see a lot of team coordination, knowing when to tarp, when to have your dual partner apply pressure. And you see Dottie there on J uh, Johnny's left, and he just continued team fire, right? And in this moment, Johnny's like, all right, I need to tarp out, keep our momentum going we cannot be stopping for anything we have to be ready to move and again just knowing how to navigate fights knowing how to isolate enemies and lock them down it's very important especially in these moments right like you make a simple mistake and it's gonna cost you here they just get the drop and shut the player down massive victory out for them now cortex and Landon here similar kind of situation uh, in the lake and we saw not that long ago just the way they kind of terrorize this entire lobby and, and this is almost a textbook win right they they're in a 2v1 right now cortex takes the lead Landon trying to split attention there for just a moment just to uh, distract the enemy players but of course now we get to take a look at the standings yeah so Arkham and Falconer with that win that we just saw pushing themselves up to 61 points but of course mm -hmm. this duo is already qualified so right now it's epic whale and 40 yard storm who are getting that one spot that they need and of course this duo is kind of a uh, last minute change right we usually yeah. see epic whale with seal map but 40 yard storm and epic whale have qualified in solo so who knows maybe this is the formula that you need to get to New York and NA West. Is yeah, it? I mean, they're making it work for them, right? Sitting here in second place with the 49 points. Now, don't forget, there is only the single spot. So if they stay just below Falconer and Arkham, that means they could potentially qualify. But don't forget, we've only got a handful of games played, right? You said it best. We're halfway through, but there's still anyone could jump up, right? Look at from 49 down to 42. That's a seven point differential. That's just one good game. Hitting top five will net you the difference there, right? And again, this spot really is not counted. Obviously, they're doing the best. They're going to get that number one spot in the prize money, but this is all what we're talking about. I mean, 49 to 42, you just said it, seven points. Mm -hmm. That's nothing. That really isn't anything at all. But some of these other guys as well, we just talked about Dade and Johnny. We broke down that win. They're at 43 right now. They've got three games played. So. They're starting to heat up a little bit, and that's typically what we see from them. Zeke, they always start at the top of the leaderboard early, but then end up falling down slightly a little bit. And we also want to take a moment to uh, check out, you know, what's going on on the socials, Zeke. Yes, so in case that you maybe didn't hear, we actually have a new Twitter handle that is FN Competitive. Check it out. That is going to be your go to for all things Fortnite competitive going on in the future. Check it out. Send it a follow. We'll constantly be posting updates of uh, things coming up. We've got clips. trios, clips, trios tournament, Fortnite World Cup finals. This is all going to be like the new stop, one stop place, one stop shop. Yeah, it's one awesome. stop shop. I don't yeah. know. I think that's one right. stop shop. You got yeah. it. Yeah, we'll gotta, hey, there's anyway, clips, you, everything yeah. there. I've been checking Check it, out it out all day. It's awesome. You've got to throw it a follow. But with that, we need to get back into the games. And we're going to throw it over back to Shy Wager and Pookie. Thank you, Bala. Don't mind us. We're just over here playing around with, with filters on our phone. <laughs> it's actually hilarious. I didn't hear anything Zeke just said there. Um, 
doesn't really matter, probably. But uh, hopping right back <laughs> into these NA West <laughs> games, uh, we're looking up for Corey right now and his duo partner, Brogster. We saw them play a little bit earlier. These guys look like they have a ton of synergy, but you know, I suppose you're going to get that when you are playing together for for 12 hours a day. And just a little bit of a side note here. Uh, I just got word that Bricori was actually a golden, a golden ticket winner. He did play in the creative showdown at uh, the, the, on the games this weekend. He was on the little whip team. So uh, kudos to him for, you know, showing up and saying, you know what? I can play more than just creative games. I've got, I've got this competitive edge in me as well. Absolutely. Back when TwitchCon was a thing, I actually think I had a conversation with Bricori. We were about to duel for a second, but the regional difference with him being west and me being east kind of blocked that entire engagement out. He has been grinding for a long time, though. A little bit of name changes going out here and there as well, but, you know, always saying OG to that broccoli start from the get-go. He's going to be kind of having some trouble on mid-ground here, so we'll see if he can actually own up and get height. He is going to be solo duo now. Jay Young going up for a quick Elam, getting blocked, but his duo comes in from the sky, Batman style, and breaks in through the skylight, picking up that next elimination as well, saving the time from that engagement. That's a big thing, especially when you're fighting on these big mid and high ground layers. The more time you take, the more your fight expands, the more you get into risky positions, the more you can get into trouble. So Jay Young and his, and his duo just playing that timing perfectly and now have a nice perch to set up on Pookie. We'll see if they can find any angles when they're looking out up top. Yeah, and just to your point, Shai, actually, now that you mention it, you know, ever since the introduction of the combat shotgun and the pump being vaulted, you know, I feel like engagements are lasting a little bit longer. You're not getting uh, the one-shot pump shotgun to the face anymore <laughs> and ending engagements really just like that. So, you know, an excellent point to bring up there and just really uh, recognizing that, you know, engagement time does matter, especially when you get into these late zones and having to rotate into the next uh, trying to get your opponents taken out as quickly and as efficiently as possible is key yeah I can feel that combat nerf there as well as those shots hit for about a total collective of 15 damage usually hitting for a lot more maximal might be frustrated at that but it does have a lot of mats and three elims going on to this stick circle rotation we'll see if he can grab height as he 90s up blocking off the competition very smart placements of floors as he moves up as well from tier to tier of height he's gonna start focusing down on the backside of Storm. that's instinct to a lot of good players at this moment now 10 weeks of practice you know exactly where to look when you're done rotating maximo now going up for that big call to take out this whole mid ground there can they find shots on this newly builded brick now we'll see if he can get into a better vantage point psych looks like he might have died to the storm or got eliminated to the storm when these guys were moving in he got a little bit of a damage tag on him there maximo doing a really good job of keeping a track and eye on everyone in the storm circle or in the zone at the moment yeah and jay young actually doing a really great job of tarping beside maximo making sure that where they're walking right now because they are an ultimate high is completely reinforced and they don't need to worry about being shot down maximo having a little bit of trouble here getting out of this storm does take two ticks of storm damage but does recover nicely hits for 15 there isn't going to get a knock or an elimination but it doesn't matter because jay young and maximo are on maximum height but look at how going up there in the baller just maybe making a play for high ground but maybe trying to pose as a little bit of a distraction against these two unfortunately Howell does have to be careful because those ballers don't have as much health as they used to Jay Young raining down shots at this point they aren't really going to be getting anything right now they need to do something at this point there are still 16 players alive they only have five eliminations between the two of them which is great but there is only one spot shy so every point matters these guys need to be fragging right now absolutely and pop-off games are always a thing as well so you got to be playing the best you can on each game and the best is good for Maximo as he gets a nice three tap off in the air getting that elimination a quick wall replace edit with pressure a rift available but he decides not to actually take the rift as well holding height for his duo to come back down and then possibly looking back up for the beam just high IQ plays here as white damage is on his enemies Devi goes down 60 Hertz not being enough to let him see the right play Jay Young moving around seven elims for this duo together still more people rifted up in the air a gift 
from Devi there, that rift that just allowed these guys to get that high tier once again, taking out all those high ground mid tarps. Gibby and Temple now on that high mid tarp as well, moving in. Pookie, they've got so much healing and a rift on deck as well. How would you segment out using this stuff near the end of the game? Well, at this point, what I would be doing, they're doing it perfectly. They should be popping minis and then using the chug slash there to get themselves each up as high as they possibly can. Each one of those are healing for 20 HP and it does have that area of effect. So using that as soon as you can is going to be great. But I like to see that they are able to actually take out a player as well. So Jay Young does take a little bit of damage, but he is going to get the 50 siphon off of that. It will bring him back up to 200 HP. Maximo and Jay Young looking very strong right now, taking out another player, absolutely just bodying these players in this <laughs> lobby. You talk about Maximo, he's playing at the maximum potential at the moment <laughs> from this high ground. Nevelak at the bottom with Pash. Looks like it's gonna be a classic 2v2, but Jay Young has that momentum at the moment. Pash gonna be looking for some shots, not being able to connect too much at the moment. Nevelak getting knocked down. Pash in a 1v1 now. Jay Young going for the finish. Both players actually going for the finishes for their respective HP. He's taking a lot of shield damage. Doesn't look like he has any more mats to use. Pash up top. Jay Young using that backup rift. Is it the right decision? We'll find out in just a moment any tree to land on anything jay young taking a lot of shots does he have a landing spot one second left the chunk splashes coming in is it enough pash hit the storm oh my lord jay young what? the last second clutch oh, the chunk splashes the third time we've seen it today and probably the most clutch we've seen it as well as he gets the top spot most iq i've seen in a wow. high ground hold ever from any region so far today holy moly guacamole holy moly guacamole indeed that was absolutely wild recognizing that he still had those two utility slots that he hadn't used the rift to go and the chug splash playing that perfectly somebody needs to clip that on stream please shout it out to me or shy at pookie face hashtag fortnite world cup i want that one to go on my on my little <laughs> wall of clips that i have on my desktop at home because that was amazing yeah not only using that rift to relocate but then popping off those chunk splashes as well isolated talking about isolated now vibes finding someone on the low ground as well once again utilizing these vertical positionings that happen a trap coming down looks like it takes out the ball that kickback had or the ball that was in their uh, turtle at the moment more focus coming down to the same place they got an elimination earlier this is smart as they know someone is going to be going for that loot they can use it kind of as a set trap or bait for people to come in and see slipstreams still up and alive right now you think anyone can catch them as they're moving around rexies and actually taking a little bit of damage going through yeah, and there's so much building here. You know, if you do want to utilize the slipstream, you could possibly do it and land on top of any one of these players' builds. But really nobody in there right now. We're taking a look at Iota, and we have uh, Vectical here as well. Uh, looking very, very good. And, like, they do have that new uh, proximity grenade launcher there. How are you feeling about that item so far in the game? So the proxim launcher is very interesting just because it does pack such a wallop, but at the same time takes an essential slot that everyone already has, you know, determined for their play style and their you know building their rotations so at the moment although it is a very strong item it's very situational and you do have to give up you know say smokes a heavy sniper stuff that's been true and tested it still is a very new item in my opinion duos have been using it to turn tides but at the same time you know which duos are we not seeing because they do get eliminated at some point in the game just like right now we see Iota going up with ve uh, Vectical at the moment. Two Shadows and a Proxim Launcher still available at the moment. Will they get the wall replaced? A Stink No Chuck Splash is coming down as his duo holds. This is a very dynamic fight. An edit coming through. Angel coming up with the pop, but does finally go down as he gets picked up. Aspire goes down as well. Now Iota has to move out by himself. Unfortunately, his duo does go down in that engagement, but they do pick up those two Elam points. So will that be worth it going forward? Will Would it be better? for both of them to stay alive for placement or would it be better for those elon points to come through and then the possibility of a solo person playing for placement Pookie, yeah. what do you think i mean iota certainly has his work cut out from him there's still so many players left in this lobby i think at this point he is in mid ground so if he can lay low for a little while hope that these other players kind of take each other out eliminate each other he can kind of sneak in under the radar if he does opt to go for placement points that would probably be his best play but here we are looking at Dade again johnny is still alive as well 46 points so far on the leaderboard 
for these boys. They also have three eliminations between the two of them. I am waiting for these guys to pop off, Shai. They're almost at their natural element. High ground is where these guys perform. We saw it last game. They're so good at just looking down, just like this. Morton getting popped. Dottie just looking left and right. 23.76. Ping won't be enough for that individual to stay alive. Fab's now fighting for height, decides to slow down him and his duo actually look like they're up there. No, that is a fight happening. A lot of rifters now coming down left and right. Golden up top, we'll see if he can stay shiny while he looks at everyone else down in the server. A lot of people still rifting. Looks like the Bolt boys are up top as well. Not sure where Johnny is. He's right below Dottie actually. A lot of hard mats now being used. It's gonna be very hard for people to just pickaxe in the boxes. It's gonna take a little bit more time once again now they're going to be choosing to stay on mid ground not fighting for height just yet they do have a lot of mats so maybe they're waiting for the rest of the lobby to use all their mats in these fights then take it 90s coming in now we'll see if Dada can go up top johnny already up there he's going to be adjusting his path left and right not only does this give him the movement option but the angles for the shots as well as he's going to be sneaking behind using enemy builds finally catching up on the backside. a big 130 shot going down on golden all the way getting dropped to bronze now unfortunate for him shots getting up down or from up getting shot from up top to down low now this is where these guys have that insane accuracy what do you make of this huge build well look at what happened so johnny was completely separated from Dottie in that position he was at 50 hp Dottie absolutely just cranking the 90s working his way up the side of that mountain to get up to johnny ends up taking out players on his way and then utilizing those chug splashes to heal his partner up that is the duo partner you want absolutely you want someone that can support you but also attack you know protect attack protect, attack gives health back <laughs> 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 Absolutely. That, that was sick. I'm not going to lie. That, that, that was really good. Thanks. 200 mats left now. As more Elims come up top, it's just relaxed for these guys. Another day in the park, another walk on the beach. It's just easy, easy comings for them. Shots getting shot up from the bottom side now. But since they are on brick, it's going to be nice and supported. Oh, Geo. Oh, no. Taking a lot of storm damage coming in from a launch pad. Sometimes you do have to dip in the storm to make sure you don't take any shots. He finally goes down. Now, it looks like it's a 2v2v1 as Prolo and Pear are looking up and down. Very dynamic, looking for all the Elims. Fruity finally goes down as Prolo challenges Height, kind of buying Pear time to see if he can see anything from the down low, kind of baiting Johnny and Dade up. Prolo and Pear now are going to be looking side by side, not staying in the same box. Smart stuff, so the pressure isn't applied to both duos at the same time. They do look a little bit stressed on mats, though. If this shot keeps happening from up top, the pressure does not stop. They've Actually, Johnny and Dade confirmed so many Elims and then got the fruitions from them, the mats. We'll see if that will hold true. Johnny finally getting dropped. Prolo goes for a shot, does not connect. They're both in storm. Prolo goes down. Dade up top has to stay on a campfire. Pair, if he gets this Elim, can get the siphon, but it doesn't go through the bolt, boys. Back to back, popping off. Just easy, easy comings, easy games. I said they had to pop off. Yeah. And they did. I mean, nice. I don't want to say it was because of me, but it was probably <laughs> actually not because, it, well, it was kind of. Is it was that, is that me. chug jug splash? It was because of me and possibly also their skill and mechanical uh, plays in the game, but you know. Uh, here we are hopping <laughs> into the next game. I, I don't really even know what I'm saying today. I think I have the Z curse or something like that. I'm just, I'm saying random things and just kind of going with it. Uh, but here we have, uh, is it Bo QT? Yeah, it looks like it's Bo QT and Bo Cold QT. Bo QT and Cold QT. Couple of cuties here, uh, just <laughs> sitting in their cone, kind of utilizing. I know you can't really see it, but there would be an edit there. They use that to visualize everything. So if you're sitting in cone, you can edit it out and kind of peek through it just a little bit. Uh, they are holding it on there, the edit, just to you know make quick work if they if they are having to move or if they do see an opportunity to take people out. And you can see people actually rifting through the sky. He does take that opportunity to take out Razzy. Razzy, unfortunately, <laughs> getting to take the L dance done to him you hate to see it shy absolutely right now too uh Bo, although he can play around his builds has to play around a gray tack as well so we'll see if they do end up surviving we go back to our feature duo that was there before jarvis and tilt both going to be in ballers as well they do have a chuck splash as well to use they're going to be going left and right utilizing the speed boost and momentum for looking the right way when you hit that boost on the baller there is kind of a skill gap if you do want to be very efficient tilt kind of going in between builds and a fall behind jarvis will this prove bad for the duo jarvis still 
still looking healthy. These guys do have four eliminations right now as we move in to the fifth moving circle. He's going to be looking to get a nice position. Looks like these guys finally got high ground, almost securing their balls. Almost. Tilt or their ballers tilt. Baller going down. Jarvis and Tilt now on the highest point in the map as the other individuals have to kind of hop off from Geyser's not going to be available to come down. Is it going to cost too much, though, as those combat shots are coming oh. in? Astra getting switched on by that AR. Maybe, you know, Tilt saying, it's time to beam. You know what? Enough it's of the pop enough shots. Of the, enough of the pop shots. Although he only had 36 HP left yeah, yeah. or less because, you know, it was just <laughs> one shot there with the AR. But you know what? I mean, better to go for that if the first shot accuracy. It's a way easier shot than try to, you know, pump pellets into somebody from 100 yards away. Absolutely. Um, but here we are taking a look again at Cold and Bo just sitting in mid ground, not really trying to go for anything. They have one elimination each. They are playing very, very safe right now. What do you make of this, Shai? Why are they playing so safe? I mean, they're looking for options. A lot of good duos when they have this much flexibility in their actual loadout build. You know, they have the heals, they have the rotation, they have the beam, they have the close range shots. They have options. It's not always good to force out one type of game style because you might have another one pop up in just two seconds. So they're probably just trying to feel out the server, use their position for that six zone, see how the server and the players in them will treat their rotation, their position, and then play off of it that way. Once again, they probably don't want to get too close to people as well as Bo only has that great tack. These beams coming in greatly, getting a lot of pressure eliminations left and right, up and down. Cold playing on a D-pad basically with this shot that he has. Just insane, hitting every single bullet that he fires. Cold now moving forward. Five elims for these guys. 21 duels left alive. So we're not at placement just yet, but points being picked up by these reactive and proactive duels as well as they make things happen. Dolphins goes down as the chug splashes come up. Really, really cool interaction where one person can still shield up and get health as they're moving around on the map. What do you think is going to happen this game with Cold and Bo? You think they're going to pop off? I mean, they literally just went from two to six eliminations between the two of them. So exactly like you said, looking for options. You called it perfectly. These guys are probably just waiting it out. Knew that they didn't have the ability to, you know, do anything long range with explodes or snipes. So they were waiting for people to get close to them. But here we have Yagi and Lucas getting rifted out there. Yagi putting a ton of damage onto his opponents there and really pressuring them but he is going to pull his umbrella early take a look see maybe if he can make a play for high ground we have destroyer at the very top with his duo there 25 players remaining 17 duos left we're about to hit top 15 and yagi said you know what i can't actually take high ground i'm just gonna go down here you know what play it a little bit safer i don't know where lucas is did he get separated oh nope there he is just <laughs> dropped right in right as i said it <laughs> like a feather just drops from the sky so He's graceful. Gonna link up with his partner Yagi now trying to get into a box. Eight Elims on him right now as Lucas is playing kind of the support role in this duo. Shots coming in, a trap available. It is his, so he can bypass it. Dart Wow, first. the flicks. I, Holy. Oh my they're just popping off right now. I haven't seen anyone on West right now miss too many shots, and every shot matters in Week 10, especially when there's only one spot. These guys have 50 points as well, so they could be in the running when we get those leaderboard updates. A lot of mats available as well. You talk about mat management. Lucas with 1,000 mats available to him as he moves up. Just amazing plays here. Getting those mats as well from eliminations is just it's, it's perfect at the moment. They have an RPG as well, Pookie, that can use late game. They do. They only have two rockets in it, though, and they are a little bit separated. They are going to have to get together here. Yagi had put down a campfire, so he was probably calling up to Lucas to say, you know what, come sit with me by the fire. We're not going to roast any marshmallows, but we are going to get some health back. But here we see them breaking out of this box here and looking to take this high ground or drop these players down, and they do. He drops them down with the RPG, doesn't get the shot off, unfortunately. But we see them here. They are getting into the top six, so very close to the top five placement, but he only has five health, Shy. Uh, it's, it's, it's insane right now how he's alive. His options are so limited. He has to go for these raw RPG shots. Sensei Tacos goes down. It's Taco Tuesday on a Friday right now. Lucas getting up to 100 elims. That was two for the cost of one rocket onto the low ground. A shadow bomb being very sneaky. Can he get those combat shots off though? Waiting for his moment. Gets that finish. Will it be able to give him the health he needs? No rockets available just yet. He has to barge through with his spam. Sees the launch pad. Hits a tree. He's getting tossed all the way around 
around by the server, but that time spent in the storm lets him be sneaky to come back into the safe circle. Cold finally going down the bow QT and cold QT wombo combo is still alive actually with Bo on high ground. Lucas on less HP, Bo with a lot, actually three mats left, has a great tax still all the way till the end of the game. Has minis, but they won't be of much, of much use now. These guys are gonna have to take this 50-50 if possible. Bo does not know how much HP his part or his opponent has. It is kind of turning up though. The angle, Bo coming down with a better angle though, doesn't mind the hill blocking off his opponent there. He's just gonna drop down, hit him with that Congo dance. Get in line, my friend. This is my game. I'm looking good doing it. The QT combo comes in from start to finish. Yeah, and they were definitely looking cute in that last <laughs> match. Indeed, Cole just showing them how it is done. But here we are getting into another match. We are over by Salty Springs this time. And Old Man Mountain as well as Sundown always says, one hour left on West. And in this moment too, if this zone bounces back the wrong way, it could spell disaster for all these low ground individuals who are in the map as well. All these people trying on this West server for that one spot, the last chance for the Fortnite World Cup. The zone does look like it's moving into Salty Ooh. as far boot. You can put that on wow. YouTube if you want. You That's going to be a big buff. Booted back to the <laughs> lobby 100%. Now, you saw there how they utilized just breaking the pyramid there, utilizing the heavy snipe to then just completely take him out. That was so well coordinated, so well played. Septile just using the launch pad here to rotate over. His teammate Chio is just behind him right now. They are getting shot at a little bit, but he isn't going to take too much damage. They do have a ton of healing between them. So we're going to have to see if Chio can join him. They can utilize the chug splashes. But Chio says, you know what? No, there's a player up here, and I think I want to keep an eye on him right now. He may have made a little bit of a mistake because now you can see how much health he effectively has left. Yeah, I think when Septile actually took that launch pad, it got shot out by someone in the actual safe circle of the storm. And then Chio Chio was forced to use one of his rift to ghost to actually get out of that situation. Chio now getting finished off by that stink grenade by 100 Thieves, Sir Demetrius, Sir D. It's going to be amazing to see how he can come back. Maybe he can also qual. It's always up to, you know, one hour left, two or three pop-off games. It's always uh, easy, you know, or not really that easy, to have that confidence to pop off to get those spots in. A care package actually available right now for any duo that's risky enough to go get it. Looks like it's being boxed over. That could change the tides of the game for individuals. But as I said, it is a risk. A lot of pressure gets put down on those um, individuals, Asset and Garrett, when they try to make that play. Yeah, and you can see here Bay Soldier and Sir D just sitting up in the box right now. I got a shout out to Bay Soldier, a good friend of mine. We play together often. I love seeing him in these games because I love seeing how he plays when he's not having to put me on his back and carry me. Now we have Cypher, PK, and Ranger actually down at the low ground. I caught these guys, I caught a little bit of Cypher's stream last night when he was trying to qualify for today with Ranger. These two looked so strong together. Game after game, they had a plan and they follow it. I don't think they really deviate much from the plan unless they're absolutely forced to. And going into these games shy, and not only just knowing that you have a plan, but also not deviating from it, even though you really want to, Ranger just gets the knock on SJ. SJ goes down, he's down. He's going to end up finishing him off, breaking out of the box there to rotate over, uses the rift, pulls up Cypher, and they are out of there. They net themselves one more elimination, putting this duo at a collective six. Septile is also still popping off, finally picks up the duo of Acid and Garrett on that mid ground there. Knock, knock, open up the door, it's real because Ranger and Cypher just randomly stumble on that duo in the mid ground, get a very nice point boost as they move up as well in the server. Now have ultimate height, gonna be looking down, a very nice relaxed leisurely time, trying to find as many elims as possible, but Rifters are coming up from up top. How would you prioritize uh, Pookie when people are coming up from up top, you have to get elims down low? What is the focus usually when you're trying to maintain height? I think honestly, like looking into the sky, trying to, those are free eliminations there, Shy. You know what, like those guys were hanging in the, in the sky for so long. I've seen time and time again, these pros are able to just completely knock players out of the sky like that. So if you are well tarped and you have the floors and the pyramids protecting you, I think looking above is, is key. And just like that, we see T Cypher taking out another player down below. So prioritizing people above you first to make sure that A, don't take high ground and B, maybe you can get a quick limb is probably the best route to take there.
that's that's absolute facts because that is the priority that's the trouble you have on your layer and then just like cypher did you can just focus down and pick up anyone else on that low ground v day up in this game is all our vibe base soldier now knocked down to a lower tier of height in the game shadow bombs available but a baller as well as opa is going to be forced to actually move around on foot in this zone the baller might not be the best option moving around this cluster of low ground where there's so many builds the baller has to bounce off multiple times as well cruels finally goes down open us move on by himself does get a nice back shot towards an enemy who was not focused on the storm you always got to protect your back as you're moving through you never know who's gonna have that much trouble moving into circle open out smartly going up one uh one height layer as well onto the mid ground base soldier getting knocked down as well as opa just continues his tirade on the whole server up on a campfire not sure if he recognizes has no more mats left so he can't go for the wall replace only has his reactions his true wit has his flicks up as well. Can he do out? 2 HP, the base soldier. Elim comes clutch for him to get his first siphon HP up, but he did end up dodging the shots. His oh, movement no. is so good, but not good enough there as Wilds picks him up. Ranger now on the bottom, picking up the back of Wilds and Mercs gets murked as well. Ranger hunting everyone else in the server. Subtel, who we saw earlier with these combo snipes and these stain grenade usages all across the map, is gonna have height in this moment Pookie. Yeah and it's a 1v1v1 so you know what Ranger had to unfortunately say goodbye to Cypher in that moment and just keep going. We have Septal at the top Bolt versus Duo. Bolt loves Duo uh, and Ranger down at the bottom looks like there's gonna be a little bit of a play here for high ground. Bolt ends up taking it from Septile who was trying to do a little bit of a heal off but Ranger's just sitting at the bottom waiting. Let's see Ranger does have the most health at this point out of anyone. Septile does have that chuck splash, but it's not enough. Looks like he might have just ran out of mats. LV's duo takes over that height, but Ranger with wow. the shootout. LV goes down. You can build up, but you have to stay supported. You have to have that foundation.